just like that famous soprano saying, just when I thought I was out of making carnival videos. Yeah, pulled me back in. <laughs> so it's official, the carnival celebration is wrapping up its very first sailing with passengers, and now that there's been some videos out, and there's no more surprises from carnival, let's talk about all the dining options that this ship has to offer, because let me tell you, it is a lot. So if you go online and actually look this up, on the Carnival's website, it actually said that there's 31 different venues to eat on this ship, which we'll get into all of them and the menus, but it's just worth noting that that is an insane amount of eateries. They're always trying to outdo themselves, they're always trying to expand and innovate, and it's just crazy. There are a little under 5,400 passengers that this ship holds, so hopefully 31 eateries can help disperse the crowd so it's not just bottlenecking up at certain restaurants throughout the course because during the Mardi Gras that did happen some restaurants were really crowded while others just didn't have anybody in it but let's dive right into it because whenever you're thinking a cruise you're really thinking what are my options to eat at least that's my first thought so let's just go right into the free options because who wants to pay extra for food so first we have Shaq's Big Chicken, and this is one of the newer dining options that Carnival has introduced in the recent years, and this specializes in fried chicken sandwiches, and they also have these really good french fries. I, they're really thin, I highly recommend checking them out. Uh, they also have tenders and some sandwiches. The sandwiches are really to die for. You can also get grilled chicken if you're about that healthy lifestyle on vacation, and they also offer breakfast options, so they do have biscuits with maple syrup on the chicken for breakfast sandwiches honestly not the healthiest way to start your day but it is indeed a very delicious way to start your day this is a great fast option if the line's not too long it literally takes 10 seconds to get a sandwich with some fries so if you're in a rush definitely hit up shack's big chicken next for a fast option Obviously, we have to talk about Guy's Burger. It is a Carnival classic. It, I believe it is the best burgers at sea. Quote me on that, put it in a news article. I stand by that statement. So this was partnered with Guy Fieri and it specializes in smash burgers and they're so juicy and the fries are doused in this Cajun seasoning. So that has me sold. But then on top of that, you have all of these different toppings at the toppings bar that you could smother your burger with. So honestly, you just can't go wrong here. We're just gonna rapid firing these. So up next is the Blue Iguana Cantina. Chipotle who, this is a free option and it actually has some real, has really good quality when it comes to just the food in general. This fast breakfast and lunch spot has some insane combinations that you can either do burritos or tacos with. The last carnival ship I was on, I literally lived at Blue Iguana Cantina, so. If you're looking for a quick breakfast option, their breakfast burrito is actually incredible. You can throw some fried hash browns in there, so great way to start your morning. And you don't feel too bad because it's fresh, and I just feel like I'm being healthy eating that, even though eh, it may or may not be. This next venue is Street Eats, and this is new to the XL class of ships. So basically, it switches on the daily, but it's a revolving menu between Time Fries, which is like this loaded french fry spot, Steam Dreams, which is a dumpling spot, and then Mad Sizzle, which changes up its ethnicities pretty much daily, but they're all extremely good options. And if you see the bulgogi at Mad Sizzle, get it. It was literally the best thing I had that week for a lunch option on the cruise. I am a huge Korean barbecue fan, but they did it justice at Mad Sizzle. We're still going. We got a lot of free options on here. Up next is Guy's Pig and Anchor. This famous barbecue spot is also paired up with Guy Fieri as a celebrity chef. And it is open for lunch and dinner. On some ships, this costs extra, but not for the celebration. I highly recommend checking this out. They have a lunch buffet kind of thing, and then a seated venue for dinner. And the menu changes. They have a smoked prime rib. I haven't had that when it, on an R selling. It was a smoked filet mignon, and it was absolutely insane. So I highly recommend if you are getting tired of the main dining rooms to check out Guys Pig and Anchor for dinner. They also brew their own beers literally inside of it so they can have flights of beers that are brewed through Carnival on the ship, which is just a really unique feature. And I don't know if any other cruise line has that, to be honest, and it is a really cool experience. I'm not a huge beer fan, but for those beer enthusiasts, this is probably a must. And since we're talking about sit-down dinners, let me tell you, Cochina del Capitano. 
This is the Italian restaurant on board, and I really do believe it is probably the best dinner option you can have on a carnival ship. Usually, this costs additional, just like Guy's Pig and Anchor, but it is free on the XL class ships, and let me tell you, seriously, let me tell you, the appetizers in this restaurant are literally the best thing you will have on this cruise ship. The meatball was super tender, there was different cuts of meat in the meatball, and it was just incredible. It's topped with some melted cheese, honestly, you can't go wrong. And then the rice balls, these rice balls were fried to perfection with an insane amount of cheese when you cut into it, it just oozed out. Literally, you can go to this restaurant, just get appetizers and have the best meal of your entire week. So Carnival limited the amount of entrees you can have, but they didn't say anything about appetizers. And at this restaurant, you should make them regret that because I recommend just going absolutely insane. Another dining option for dinner and lunch is Chebang, which is a Mexican Asian fusion, which is a really interesting idea. It, it's not really fusion to be honest though. They have a bunch of Asian dishes on the menu and a bunch of Mexican dishes on the menu. It's not like fajita, beef and broccoli or anything like that, which I thought it was at first, which was kind of disappointing, but honestly, the menu is really vast and you have a bunch of different options. So for lunch, it's build your own bowl. You pick a type of noodle, you pick a protein, some additional toppings that you want, and they just make this fried noodle bowl for the Asian side. And then for Mexican, it's literally the exact same thing as Blue Iguano Cantina. So if you don't want to sit down, have a full service, and you just want to do something quick and easy, honestly, I recommend going to the Blue Iguana Cantina because it is pretty much the exact same thing. But dinner, on the other hand, is a totally different menu, and both the Asian and Mexican options are really good quality, and you're not going to find anything like that on the ship anywhere else. So I definitely recommend. It's an interesting concept. It works. It does work. So I recommend checking out Chebang. And this is no surprise, but the Lido Buffet. So honestly, every ship ever has a Lido Buffet. And on the celebration, it's worth noting that it's pretty large. They have a bunch of different options. You're not stuck with the same dishes. They do rotate dishes daily. They do have favorites for breakfast. You're probably going to be getting your scrambled eggs. They switch between eggs benedict and salmon benedict throughout the course of the sailing. And then for lunch and dinner, it's pretty much revolving. There's not really a dish that's repeated twice. So if you like something a lot in the buffet, load up on it that day because it's not gonna be there tomorrow. And unique to the celebration that I haven't really seen on other carnival buffets where the fact that there is a carving station, so you still can get that really nice high quality meat that you would associate with the main dining room in the Lido buffet. So if you're in a rush, you wanna catch a show and you don't have time to sit down in the main dining room, you just go to the Lido buffet. And as I just mentioned, the main dining room is also a different place that you can check out. This menu changes every day, they do have a small part of the menu that stays the same, but for the most part, new entrees every day. And this is like your free classy dinner. You get waited on by waiters and waitresses that are wearing ties, that are wearing their vests. It's what you would think of a more high-end restaurant. You are gonna be waiting a while. It is not a fast dining option. There are 5,400 people on this ship and a majority for dinner do end up going to the main dining room. If you wanna sit, unwind, talk to your friends and family, this is a great spot to do that because you are gonna be sitting around for like an hour, hour and a half for a meal. And let me tell you, the dining room is absolutely beautiful. They did such a good job on the XL class ships. The celebration looks incredible in the main dining room. The quality of food is a little bit better in the main dining room than the Lido buffet, but it's still not to the level of what you would expect for when you're paying for, say, a steakhouse. Main dining room also does sea day brunch, which I highly recommend. It is literally one of my favorite meals, going to the dining room, getting really good quality stuff. The Lido buffet doesn't really have bacon anymore, so if you want bacon, you would go to the sea day brunch because they are scaling back with COVID cutbacks still and trying to recoup some of their losses, but the main dining room, for brunch, you would never know that Carnival has done any cutbacks. They still have steak and eggs on the menu. They still have bacon and the service is always impeccable. So I feel like not too many people know this, but in the main dining room, they also offer tea time. This varies from sailing to sailing, but it is worth noting that they have some really elevated desserts with some finger sandwiches and tea. So if you want to be classy and act like you're British for the day, Go check out Tea Time because they do offer some really cool stuff. And for those people who are night owls, you do have Miami Slice, which is the pizza restaurant on board. This is open until 4 a.m. 
so you can get a full pie of pizza to yourself up until 4 a.m. Totally free. They have a bunch of different options for your pies. And it does get a little bit crowded after the bar is let out. But during the daytime, it's pretty slow there. But they are made to order pizzas. So it is coming out fresh. So you might take a couple minutes just to put in a pizza that's fresh for you. On Carl's website, they consider this a dining option. So I'm going to say it. But I feel like everyone kind of just walks past this. It's nothing crazy. Is Swirls, which is the Carnival's ice cream machines that are open until midnight. That is a new change. So you can have ice cream until midnight. Overall, there are a lot of free dining options. But if you are willing to pay a little bit extra, maybe you want a better quality meal, maybe you're having a special occasion and you want to celebrate with some really more intimate place, these restaurants are for you. So up first we have Ruby Sea Grill. This is a newer option that is being offered on Carnival. The first restaurant was actually on board the Carnival Mardi Gras, which is the sister ship of the Carnival Celebration. So this restaurant is partnered with chef Rudy Sodeman. He is known for his seafood dishes and honestly if you're in the middle of the ocean you can expect some really fresh seafood. He has an incredible menu and honestly it's an extremely elegant looking restaurant. It is beautiful. I have never personally eaten here but I have known people on the ships who do go there for dinner and they rave about it. Up next we have Bonsai Tempniaki, which is one of my personal favorite dining experiences. If you're gonna pay a little extra, I highly recommend checking out this one. So this is, this is a hibachi restaurant, which is absolutely to die for. The chef is putting on a show and is usually just as funny as the comedians on board, honestly. Maybe not the adult shows, but the kid shows definitely give the comedians a run for their money. It's really high quality stuff. It's a typical hibachi show and honestly I love it every time I go there. Sticking with the bonsai theme there's also bonsai sushi which is right next to the tempanyaki. It's a solid sushi restaurant with really fresh fish just like Rudy's who would have guessed if you're in the middle of the ocean they would have really fresh fish. The hand rolls are actually pretty affordable and honestly it's a really cool atmosphere. You have an entire wall filled with windows so you do get an amazing view of the ocean. Next, we have Fahrenheit 555, which is the steakhouse on board. And I get it, there's literally a steakhouse on every ship, but the new ships have such a beautiful steakhouse with amazing decor, and you really can never go wrong in the steakhouse. It's also totally worth noting, and this is a pro tip here, so pay attention. On the newer ships, the most high-end liquors and wines are in the steakhouse bar. So, if you want an old-fashioned with Blanton's, you go to the steakhouse. If you want a shot of Hennessy XO, you go to the steakhouse. Want a really nice glass of wine that's barely included in the cheers package? Say it with me. You go to the steakhouse. The experience at the steakhouse is awesome. You even get to pick out what salt you want your steak seasoned with, which is just kind of gimmicky, but honestly, really cool at the end of the day. Up next, I feel like this option is overlooked quite often for lunch, and it is the seafood shack. Personally, I don't really splurge on lunch food because there is so many free dining options for lunch, but making this video, I was looking at the menu and honestly was really tempted by the lobster BLT. Honestly, the seafood shack looks like a really solid option for all seafood lovers. They have a really wide variety of seafood and you can get your fresh seafood or your fried seafood. So honestly, looks like a great option. One of the apex dining experiences on the Carnival Celebration is Chef's Table. And this is notable because it is really expensive. It's over $100 per person, but it is a multi-course meal with some really high quality, unique ingredients. And there's a very limited amount of seats for this. It's a very small, intimate experience. You get to sit with the chef as he talks about how he prepares the dishes. It's kind of like a Michelin star vibe, honestly. When you compare the price to what you get on land, it is a very good value. However, it is still pretty pricey when you're just comparing it to the other dining venues on the ship. And unique to the Carnival Celebration is, is Carnival Kitchen. You pay to cook. I'm kidding, it is a cooking class and it is a unique experience. You do get to learn how to cook some really cool dishes. Personally, when I'm on vacation, I don't want to do any cooking. I don't want to do any cleaning. But for those of you who aren't lazy like this guy, it could be a really cool, unique experience. On the website, the dishes range from barbecue food to chicken satay. So let me know in the comments what your ideal dish to make would be. Mine would be something Italian because, you know, I'm pretty well versed in making Italian food and I feel like it's pretty easy. It's not too t labor intensive. So let me know in the comments. I'm curious. And that's everything. So honestly, the Carnival Celebration looks like it has a bunch of dining venues. I'm very excited to get on this ship. Let's say there is definitely not a shortage of food on the Carnival Celebration. You have plenty of dining venues to choose from. And honestly, the free food options 
are so plentiful that you really don't need to go through a paid for restaurant, but if you want to treat yourself, you're on vacation. You only live once, spend the money. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and until next time, peace.